Hello, and welcome to Atheist Talk. My name is James Zimmerman. I'm going to be your host for this episode. Today we're going to be talking about bringing up children without religion, free thought parenting. My guest for today is Eric Jane. <laughs> That's what we're here to talk about? It is. <laughs> yeah. So Eric is a member of the board of Minnesota Atheists, has been for several years. More importantly, I had him join me here today because he's a father, like I am, and unlike most of the Minnesota Athe or Atheist Talks programs where I'm asking questions of someone and they're giving answers about something. We're hoping this is going to be more of an interchange between the two of us, each asking questions, sharing our thoughts, ideas, opportunities with parenting. So I'll start by asking you a question. <laughs> <laughs> um, why don't you just give us a little bit of background on your, your time as a father? Well, James, actually, I'm going to ask you a question. Tell me about what it's like for you to be a father. Oh, you want me to start first? Okay. <laughs> yeah, because now power is switched. Yeah, no, I, well, I wasn't going to talk about what it's like. I was just going to give the nuts and bolts. Like, I wanted you to tell me how many kids you had and stuff. But I'll, I'll do it first. I'll set the example, okay? okay. So, so I have three children. They're ages 3, 7, and 12. Uh-huh. And my wife and I have been non-religious since our first kid was one year old. So basically as long as any of them, get, as long as he can remember and as long as the other two have been alive, we've been raising them without religion. So we have two boys and a girl. How about you? So I have one girl, two boys. Okay, it's just like me. Yes. However, I think opposite of you isn't your, no wait, no, your girl's in the middle. Yeah. Right, okay, so my girl's the oldest. Okay. And she's 19. And then I have 14-year-old boy and 11-year-old boy. Okay, so your, your kids are a little bit older than mine. Yeah, mm -hmm. except for your oldest. <laughs> my youngest is younger right, than sure. your oldest. And have right. you been uh, bringing them up without religion their whole life? I have. Okay. So I would say that <clears throat> we have raised our family, our, our kids. Like, we are a family that it's not religious, so <laughs> of course we would not really have a whole lot of religion or religious stories or biblical literacy flowing in our family. That said, I would say that they are introduced to it sometimes just by popular culture. Sure, yeah. Simpsons comes to mind. We are a family that has had a long-standing tradition of watching The Simpsons okay. <laughs> on TV. Mm -hmm. And in The Simpsons and Futurama and some of that uh, kind of uh, animated humor that, that we all enjoy in our family, um, there's been a lot of references and comedy made from religious references. So I always then use that as an opportunity to speak to my children about how Here's why it's important to be, to be more literate in religion, to mm -hmm. know more about what uh, religious culture is, to know more about, about that stuff, just so that you can appreciate really, um, not only pop culture, not just that, but you know, just culture mm -hmm. in general. So before we go too much into just being immersed in a, a very religious culture, yeah. I wanted to first talk about smaller culture and that is our families because we're both um, we were we were not raised non-religious so in a way it's new territory for us that's that's something that my wife and I have in common with you and your wife correct correct yeah so in that way that's maybe one of the first ways in which religion has come up is in a difference between you and relatives cousins uncles aunts grandparents yeah, everybody. Yeah. Really. So what's been your experience with that that sort of intersection? Everybody except for my brother. One of my brothers. Is who's religious also, in your family? Yeah, yeah. One 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 is not. So there's a lot of opportunity to to butt heads or opportunity to teach your children? What right. happens at those incidences? So yeah, you know, with, with, with my particular family there's there's uh you know, we don't talk, my family of origin is not particularly close with my children, so we don't really have a whole lot of opportunity for that kind of contact. But that said, that, that has come up occasionally. And when it does, I have had the conversation with my kids about how this is what they believe. 
and they believe it a lot, and they believe it sincerely, yeah. and it's okay for them to believe that. Um, but here's some of the things that they might say or they might do, or I don't even know if we even go that far. We just say that this is what they believe and this is why they believe it, and, and it's okay. Mm -hmm. And usually that comes up because that has been introduced to them first. Like that kind of behavior that yeah. comes from that kind of belief has been introduced to them first and that's when we would broach that topic. Uh -huh. That had never been introduced by us on purpose. For example, when my, one of my parents got um, my oldest daughter, who was probably like four or five at the time, a prayer bear and you squeeze it and my parent talked about... Um, Hold on, it's just a stuffed bear, right? No, no, it's so much more than a stuffed bear. Okay. No, it's a bear that's cute and cuddly and then you hug it, kind of like the laundry bear, the snuggle bear. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, this program brought to you by Snuggle. <laughs> <laughs> that you squeeze it and then it like says a prayer, now I lay me down to sleep. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So that whole thing. Mm -hmm. And and then the, my parent said, I, honestly, I can't even, I think, I can't even remember if it was my mom, my stepmom, or my dad. <clears throat> One of those two moms, I think. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I don't remember. But what I do recall is just that, and then dealing with that. That was the first time that I ever remember dealing with how, oh, yeah, here's this religion mm -hmm. thing that's come up, and what is this prayer bear all about, and what is this bear saying? And, yeah, so, I don't know. We had the conversation oh, yeah. at that time. Um, Shortly thereafter, a first grade teacher of my daughter talked to, or had some sort of like story uh, during the holiday season, during Christmas, about a kangaroo. It was all allegorical, but it was all Jesus. And, and so the teacher, first grade teacher in public school, talked about Jesus and how this story is about Jesus. Really inappropriate. So then that was another opportunity to uh, talk to my daughter yeah. about, mm -hmm. about that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, well, you know what, what I. Uh, experienced having grown up as a Jehovah's Witness there's a lot of things that they do differently than other Christian denominations so uh, now when we do things with my wife's family and a number of them are Catholic or different Christian varieties and there'll be things that I'm exposed to for the first time too and I knew that Catholics or whatever domination, denomination did these things but I'd kind of forgotten about them so like when I would talk to uh, my oldest son, when he was younger, I would tell him things, obviously, from my own experience. But then, uh, you know, witnesses don't celebrate any of the holidays. So then going to celebrate the holidays, like uh, on Christmas Day, before dinner, uh, some of the relatives wanted to say a prayer. And I, I didn't know that they did that, you know. So I, I was just kind of stuck there for a moment. I had to encourage my son to just be quiet and just stand respectfully here, and we can talk about this later, you know. Witnesses also don't say, bless you, when someone sneezes. They think it's... Uh, disrespectful, not even, you know, it's not even valuing a sacred thing to, to do something like that. So when that would happen, when someone would sneeze and then my son would hear, bless you, he would wonder, why, why are they saying that? You know, and then um, we would sometimes be at other churches for one reason or another. Well, I guess not for one reason or another. It was always for a wedding. And this would be a different experience than the weddings that I had seen as uh, growing up as a Jehovah's Witness. So I would have to tell my kids, oh, yeah, they, they do this thing where they speak in Latin, or, yeah, they wear these really frilly clothes up on the stage there, because those are not things that witnesses do. So that would, that would open up the opportunity to discuss them, you know. And now that I've been a parent long enough, when we're about to go into something where I know that religion is going to become a factor, I try to try to educate them beforehand. You know, it's important that we just stand respectfully off to the side, or if we're sitting there, you know, just let's sit respectfully, let's not talk when they're doing this. And if something seems unusual or weird, you know, or you don't understand it, that's totally okay. I probably don't either, but we'll figure it out later. We'll talk about it at home. So you think of autism spectrum disorder, mm -hmm. there's a spectrum there, right? And then you think about religions. And think about how far on the spectrum are you religiously <laughs> on things. Jehovah's Witnesses are like so far on the spectrum here yeah. that it seems to be that it's no fun. I think of my religious upbringing and at least I got to participate in 
Christmas and Easter. Yeah. And, all that stuff. I feel bad for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They didn't That's celebrate holidays. They didn't have youth groups, or uh, they didn't put on plays. There were no playgrounds in the church parking lot or the church property, I should say. So yeah, they were really just uh, just boring. So when I see a lot of the other things at other religions, I have to quickly remember. Oh yeah, that's right. They do this thing where they pass around wafers or something, you know, and that's not something that I was exposed to either. So I try to remember, uh, you know, what do I got to do here in the, in the moment with my kids? So what about with religious friends? I mean, we talked about, or you mentioned that we live in a culture where a lot of people do claim to be religious. Most people, most of those people say that they are Christians. So inevitably at school or in your neighborhood, your kids are going to be playing with, uh, hanging out with kids that are religious. So has there ever been any issues there? Or how do you deal with problems? With my kids just operating with everybody else, yeah, you know, so it comes up and kids are trying to figure out life, trying to figure out things, and a lot of kids who my, kid, my kids go to school with and interact with, a lot of those kids get a religious instruction. Mm -hmm. And even if you're on the lighter end of that spectrum, it's still an instruction, and at its core, at its very basic core, it's a, we're right about life, the universe, and everything, and they're wrong, as far as I can tell. And I think that there's some people who have a lot of humility with that, and there's quite a few who don't, but when you're a kid and you go to Sunday school, at least my experience in, the, in all of that was that this is the Bible, this is the Word of God, this is fact, this, and it's such a, such a huge, huge fact, like the, the wager is so huge. The, the consequences are so enormous mm -hmm. that, um, of course, you're, you're going to believe it. Like, it's more true than two plus two is four, that if you believe in Jesus, then you go to heaven, that that's the ultimate fact, and you believe it. And, you know, that I, I feel like truly that that's still the practice these days. I feel like hopefully as we progress here, you know, you see the things on Pew Research about the rise of the nuns and people who are rejecting more of that kind of like instruction and that teaching, that that's on the rise and that's a good thing. But for now, I feel like there's still like the vast majority of kids are still operating under that kind of premise. Yeah, I, I've found that too with um, other children that my, especially my two older kids associate with. You know, when I was in school, again, of course, I'm speaking as a former Jehovah's Witness, but we were only supposed to be good friends with other Jehovah's Witnesses. So the people who came over to my house for play dates or if I like slept over at a friend's house, it was always, they were always Jehovah's Witnesses. So really at school was the only time that I had any time to really be exposed to other beliefs and ideas about where we came from or the big questions, I guess I could say. And uh, somehow that was okay with my parents, you know. So I remember talking with kids who were staunchly non-religious and with kids who were Jewish, who were Lutheran, who were Catholic. And I see that happening again in uh, especially my 12-year-old's generation that he can sit like in the lunchroom in school and the kids might talk about what they said at Sunday school or something and kids can challenge each other on it or they can say why they believe that or don't believe that or why they have a certain practice and don't and the kids can get away with that with their camaraderie and their innocence that like obviously I it wouldn't even think it would be appropriate if I spoke to like a neighbor kid about <laughs> their religious difference and said well here's why I don't believe what you believe you know I think their their parents would come over to me and get on my case for kind of challenging another a child's belief system but kids here yeah. seem to be a little bit freer with being able to speak to each other that way probably even more so than adults because a lot of adults just don't talk about some of those big topics with with say your coworkers or your neighbors and you know I feel like these days too there's way more Muslims interacting with mm -hmm. my kids than I experienced when I was a kid. You know, so I don't know. I, I'm, I'm hopeful. I, I, I truly feel like things are progressing well where kids, even though they're still getting that instruction in religion in Sunday school and they talk about it, that, uh, you know, it's, it's 
more acceptable that everybody just has a different worldview. Mm -hmm. um, I will say though that I did intervene uh, with um, my daughter's friend when my daughter asked, or when my daughter's friend asked my daughter if she thought if she's going to heaven or hell. Um, and that's in Atheist Voices of Minnesota. Oh, right, you recall you yeah. <laughs> that essay yes. that I wrote the in that book. Yes, you wrote, yeah. Okay. So you also have an essay in that book. Right, but not about fatherhood. But you can go ahead and speak to your story again because not, maybe not everyone listening right. to this show has read that. So just real quick, the 30-second anecdote mm -hmm. here yeah. is that we're walking. So my, my daughter's friend came over for a sleepover, and uh, we, had a, um, it, we were walking to a convenience store. Mm -hmm. And as we were walking there, or a store, um, and we're walking there, and as we're walking, it's summer, so my daughter's friend had gone to vacation Bible school, which is a really popular evangelical thing. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. really popular in Protestant evangelical stuff. And anyway, she just asked my daughter, hey, are you going up there or down there? And then my daughter said, I don't know, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. I'm going over here, I'm going yeah. over to the <laughs> store. And then she said, no, are you going to heaven or hell? And then I just, and my daughter, she didn't know, she's nine. And uh, so I just said, I'll call her Molly. It's not a real name, but okay. Molly, you know what? There is no, there is no hell. Nobody's going down mm -hmm. there. There's no such place down there. So don't worry about it. And that's it. That's all I said. So I didn't say anything else. I didn't, I didn't say that there wasn't like uh, a heaven, because mm -hmm. that's a good thing. That's a good thing to believe in as a nine-year-old kid. Like, mm -hmm. I, I would never take that away. That would be bad. But the whole idea and the thought about something terrible, a horrible place that you would go to just because you're not taught to believe mm -hmm. the same thing that you believe, that's a horrible yeah. thing for a kid to mm -hmm. process. And that's what they teach in Sunday school, in Bible school, church. That's, and that's my biggest yeah. issue that I have with religion, even though it's become more... Like, you do have a lot of people who are tolerant, and I'm tolerant, and, and that's good to be tolerant, and the coexist, and all that stuff, you know, Catholics with rainbow flags, that's all great, but it doesn't change the fact that in the Bible, it still says horrible things, it endorses that God is against um, a man who lays with a man, and I think mm -hmm. that's how it's written in Leviticus, and you know, there's all kinds of other outrageous things that still remain, even though we as a society and a culture are still changing and adapting. And that's, and that's to me, the most important thing yeah. about teaching my kids. Um, just decency, human kindness, and that's the best parts religions have to offer. And hopefully that's the pieces that their friends who get this religious instruction are hanging on to, and not the whole mm -hmm. thing about hell. Yeah, my... My experience with my older son is that he sometimes has had conversations with school friends or neighborhood friends who don't believe certain areas of science because it conflicts with their religious views. So that's a little bit different. That's not a heaven or hell thing, but it's them saying we we don't believe this or this sort of this thing that science tells us is real isn't really real because because you know my Sunday pastor says that it's not real. So yeah. that's been an interesting. Um, issue to deal with because again you don't want to be disrespectful too much you know I don't want my son to lose any friends but at the same time you know it's he can explain why he disagrees with them and the kids seem to be able to get away with that like I said more so than adults can disagreements that they have yeah right so one thing that we've found is like he'll come home and he'll say you know so and so said this they don't believe in this because of their religion and why is that so that is a good opportunity to have a good conversation with your kid because uh, we might have maybe discussed the problem of global warming before, or maybe he's heard about it in school, but we've never talked about the fact that some people just reject it because that, that hasn't come up, you know, just like I don't think I've ever talked to my seven-year-old about the fact that some people think that the earth is flat. Like we've ta talked about the shape of the earth and how it orbits the sun and I'm sure she's heard about it in, in first grade and second grade, but it's never come up that some people just reject that. And that's obviously a rare thing, but she might come home from school one day and say, so-and-so at lunch today said she believes the earth is flat because that's what Apparently, if she yeah. becomes like an NBA fan, she'll learn that a lot of people <laughs> right, reject yeah. that the Earth is round. Right. 
<laughs> that could happen. So, <laughs> so that's that's kind of. Um, I don't want to say that that having that ridiculous belief or rejecting a certain scientific finding is good, but it's good for us because it offers an opportunity for us to teach them about the variety of thought processes that we have even here in Minnesota. And it also helps us to explain why we agree. Like, why, why do I agree that the Earth is round? Because obviously you're right, some people say it's flat, but why do I, why do I disagree with them but agree with the people who say it's round? Then we can kind of make sure that we're following the evidence and trying to not let our, our emotion or our heart dictate things like that. And how's that going? I would say very good, yeah. Everybody's pretty well. Yeah, I think the important thing to get into your kid's head is that you shouldn't make fun of someone for another belief. That, not that that's been an issue, but I think that some kids could go that route, you know, if people are different than them. You don't make fun of them. We don't have to disrespect them, you know, or call, call them names. See, I disagree. So I have taught my kids that they absolutely must make fun of, ridicule anybody who's different than them. Okay, yeah, so you have a different policy. <laughs> Your kids are a little bit older. So I'm kidding. Yeah. But, all right, so I was going to ask you something else, but I forgot what it was. Well, I have plenty of questions here. Okay. Well, you're so good at interviewing. Go ahead. I'm wondering if you've ever taken your kid. I, so I mentioned this about taking kids to weddings that are usually religiously backed. Have uh -huh. you taken your kids ever to religious services? I have. Have you? Yeah, I just said I'd taken some of them. <laughs> How about you? So this is why you're a good interviewer, mm -hmm. because you're better at listening than me. Um, yeah, we did. We took them to a Unitarian church, and it was something that I thought would be a good idea, just to get them to be more um, knowledgeable about what that experience is like. We went to a, a Christmas service at a Unitarian oh, okay, church. Yeah. And I was hoping for something entertaining and something good, something that would really kind of grasp, mm -hmm. take hold. But all I got was just a really boring service with lots of singing and um, lots of preaching. And that was it. So my kids were bored, and that's what I remember church being like. So mm -hmm. we never went again. Um, yeah, so I guess I can flesh out my answer a little bit more. My kids have been to Catholic and Lutheran weddings, not so much just to show them what a religious service is like, but because a friend or family member invited us to their wedding and we went. But yeah, we've also taken them to a UU U, U church, which is, you know, religion light. <laughs> There's not really any, uh, any theological teachings there. It's more just kind of a community of people who believe in the sacredness of, of life and all things. And it depends on which you you, you go to. It does, to. and I've been to three or four of them. So they have had that experience. And then yeah. we did go to a Buddhist session once too. Uh, my oldest son has asked about other religious services and we haven't done it yet, but I would like to because I, I'm curious too. Because, again, this goes back to a witness upbringing that you're not supposed to involve in any other religions. So when I was a Jehovah's Witness, even if I was really curious to see what goes on at a Mormon church on Sunday, you know, just out of curiosity, not because I'm going to buy into it, right? You couldn't do it as a witness. That would be considered an interfaith activity and you would, you know, get disciplined. So now I think I kind of would like to just to go see what different uh, religions do at their, at their services. And I would bring my kids if they're curious, you know, but I'm waiting till they're a little bit older, especially with a seven-year-old. I think a lot of it would just go over their head. And you're right, it, there's going to be bore, boring times. So What do Scientologists do? do? Yeah. <laughs> what do they do? So, you know, we've gone to Scientology. Did you take your kids? N no, I don't think I did. Yeah, you didn't. But I would be open to it. Mm. I'm totally open to letting my kids explore. Yeah, see, again, though, things. yours are older, so it'd be, they could... But at the time, what's going on. at the time when we were doing the, the tour of the Scientology mm -hmm. Church, which we did with Minnesota Atheists. Yeah, I wasn't there, but I know you did, yeah. They were too young. Okay, and Nobody was into it All right. um, or interested, but yeah, anyway. So I know we've talked about uh, public school a couple times here. Has there been any reciting the Pledge of Allegiance issues? Yeah, well, yeah. I hate, I hate that the kids have to do the whole Pledge of Allegiance every week uh, or every day. I think it's a, it's a daily thing in my kid's school district. I did uh, at one point reach so out. So your kids though, I mean, so your daughter is 
at university, but your uh, your boys, they're in middle school and high school, right? Yeah. Are they still doing the Pledge of Allegiance? No, no, okay. no, no. So you're talking about back in elementary school yeah, days? Yeah, okay. in the past, yeah. So I quickly, I just, I, I emailed the principal of the school one time about it. She said, take it up with your uh, legislators. I did, and I didn't hear back, and I kind of, whatever. I gave mm -hmm. up because I didn't want to make too much hay about mm -hmm. it because I didn't want to put my kids on the spotlight. But whether or not I made the right decision with that, I don't know. Um, it still bugs me mm -hmm. that they had to do it, but yeah. Anyway, how about you? Yeah, so when I was a Jehovah's Witness growing up, we, set, we were supposed to sit, recite it every oh, morning yeah. in class, but witnesses cannot do it, right? right? But then after we left the religion, and then when my son went to school, I just didn't even think about it. I was, you know, just thought, you know, we're not religious, he can, he's just gonna go to school. And I'm so glad that I don't have to tell the teacher that he can't sing the Christmas songs in music class, you know? But then it was when we went and visited his school one day, and then I realized, oh, wow, they, I for, co totally forgot that they do the Pledge of Allegiance at school, but he didn't do it. So we asked him, this was like on a parent involvement day when parents can go and just observe and participate in some of the uh -huh. activities. So then that evening, we asked my son, how, how come you didn't say the pledge? And he just kind of shrugged his shoulders and said he thought it was kind of a dumb thing to do. We're like, okay, did they ever force you? And he said, no, no one really the Parents minds. go in the school and they watch the kids do their daily activities? Yeah, and the, well, on the parent involvement day, that was kind of like an open house for parents to come. They had it once a uh -huh, year. Oh, okay. So now my daughter, who's a second grader, is, is in a different school and they don't do it. So it's not even... I, don't, I think if you asked her about the Pledge of Allegiance, she wouldn't even know what it is. Got so. it, yeah. Yeah, it definitely depends on the, the school and the location of the school, especially from reading online. I find some parents have had some issues about it. Of course, there's also atheist parents that couldn't care less if their parents say it, if their children say it or not. You know, there's all, all varieties, so. Yep, and I, and I appreciate that, you know, those who say that they couldn't care less. Like, I couldn't care less either, mm -hmm. except for the fact that it's just one of those symbolic things mm -hmm. that, that really bugs me. And it comes from a place of religious privilege. And I think that um, just by those two facts alone, it's, yeah. it's a terrible thing. Um, so we are pretty much out of time. Yeah. Is there any, we have a few seconds left. Anything else you want to say? Any glorious insights into non-religious <sighs> parenting? Boy, oh boy. Um, how about just be a good parent? Just Treat everybody, treat your kids with kindness and with decency, and um, don't worry so much about the afterlife because the present life is the life that we all guarantee is happening right now. So take care of that. Great, thank you. Well said. <laughs> all right. Thank you for your time. There is so much more we could talk about. We had a lot of books we were gonna discuss too. We could, we could almost do a part two another day. But thank you in the meantime, Eric, for coming and sharing some of your insights as a non-religious parent with us. And thank you for watching the show. If you are interested in us, we're interested in you, so contact us. And I have, I have a brand new issue of Minnesota Atheists in here. If I can even open it up. You have three seconds. I have three seconds. It's in here. Two, one. We will send you a copy of our newsletter if you contact us at the information you see on the screen. Thank you so much. Have a good day.